Hi everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ran Yogi Diaries. This is your host Santosh Shiva. Over the last 2 years I've had the privilege of talking to some amazing people, day-to-day people who are on an extraordinary journey of well-being through endurance sports. I hope you took some possibility back into your lives, took some action and maybe some inspiration to perspire. In the house today folks somebody very exciting Pramod Desh Pandey goes by coach Pramod of Jayanagar Jaguars of Bangalore one of the early and premier running groups and um, uh, that was formed in Bangalore and kind of pioneered the uh, running uh, craze that's happening in Bangalore uh, so stoked to have the opportunity to get behind the scenes of his personal journey how he got started into uh, coaching and uh, went on to build a um, a very successful franchise with uh, jjs as they call it uh, jenagar jaguars if you are on this channel for the first time please do remember to subscribe uh, do like the video if you enjoyed the conversation and uh, share with others as well as leave your comments and let us know what you thought uh, let's dig in Hi Pramod welcome to Run Yogi Diaries Hi hi Santosh thanks for having me here Oh it's such a pleasure such a pleasure to have you uh you have such a fascinating inspiring story uh you know and uh would love to get behind the scenes and understand the person behind coach Pramod <laughs> you know the <laughs> Thanks thanks for this opportunity thank you Yeah yeah absolutely absolutely So uh let me you know do a quick uh, stab at introducing who you are and you know if i miss something uh let me know okay yeah, sure so so you are originally from pune uh, correct yep that's right uh, but now settled in bangalore yeah namma bangalore and uh, you've been an athlete uh, from the 80s uh, you worked in the insurance and tech industry for many years and you're a co-founder and a chief coach at uh, Jayanagar Jaguars one of the early uh, groups running groups in Bangalore uh, yeah. probably started in around 2000 time frame 7 time yeah, frame absolutely yep right and um, and one of the earliest groups that started offering structured training programs i guess given your background in athletics uh, so yeah kind of did i yeah yeah, yeah. catch everything it, right so from 2014 we started structured training programs so first batch was 2014 uh, before that it was like any other running club oh, you know just getting okay. together and running okay okay got it got it cool so uh, obviously here uh, promote we here to get a glimpse about uh, your own personal journey in running um, because uh, Uh, and then how it all evolved into what you do today yeah so maybe we'll do a bit of a flashback uh, i know you you uh, you were an athlete uh, when you were growing up so give us a sense of how it all happened yeah so i'm from a school in pune and pune has a kho tradition of kho kho right and i'm from a school uh, where kho kho was a major thing so it's called nmv no movie and uh, we have a very very long tradition of fantastic kho kho players so everybody comes who joins kho kho and as you know kho kho is kind of uh, mm. uh, you know mother of all activities you do as a fitness right it has got the sprinting endurance stamina agility everything so that's where the thing started from maybe uh, 70s when i was in uh, fourth standard and then it continued uh, our school has a huge ground so football and everything but because of uh, this kho kho there was a natural speed which was been developed and maybe i was a sprinter born sprinter so i got into sprinting but pretty late yeah at those times hmm. there was no coaching per se for uh, any of this kind of activities right there is hmm. 
uh, there was no even pt teacher in those days right luckily our mm-hmm. school had one one gentleman who used to do that but no focused training for athletics etc but people mm-hmm. know i used to run fast uh, so that's mm-hmm. where around 11th stand, uh, standard maybe beginning of 80s i got into sprinting again nobody to teach mm-hmm. so and there is no youtube nothing so yeah. <laughs> just go by yourself uh, so that's how it started uh, but i never stopped any time in my life ever doing some mm-hmm. or other fitness activity always mm-hmm. involved into fitness activity and uh, yeah uh, i even got into into the job uh, more of a sportsman yeah i was mm-hmm. also heavily into because a punekar punekar has to be part of theater so i was heavily into theater at some mm-hmm. time around 15 years mm-hmm. i spent in theater but then uh, somebody said that so uh, so, uh, so uh, you could have become a bollywood actor too <laughs> yeah maybe bollywood actor for sure lot of my uh, my juniors my my time guys are in bollywood they are famous actors in right. bollywood uh, character actors of course but they are well known for their acting and yeah but then somebody said that you know if you want to continue theater you can join this company where you can do that as well as you can run and actually i got so you have to run fast to join this company that company has a lot of holidays so you can then become a you can continue with your passion for uh, theater so that's how i ended up in insurance company because i was fast and i then again actually proper training started happening i am talking about mm. 84 85 time frame maybe 86 so mm. yeah and from then onwards mm. proper training happened because one gentleman who had come mm. from uh, out of the state and he was india coach at some time so he started coaching that's where the exposure to coaching proper training happened and mm. i was fastest man of my company uh, for so many years uh till 2000 uh, i was doing that and i you started mm-hmm. coaching around uh, 90s uh, so about 90 i started coaching because we had a very very large group and uh, mm-hmm. to support the main coach i started taking care of uh, kids and i'm talking about proper athletic coaching yeah right, there right, is right. a yeah. sorry to say that but there is a stark difference between a competitive proper athletic coaching yeah and what yeah. currently is the scene with uh, uh, this uh, uh, this their recreational running mm-hmm. yeah there is a huge gap there is a lots yeah. and lots of uh, difference so yeah i did uh, yeah. that coaching for quite some time i had a uh, mm. lot of uh, national players who who were part of my team i continued uh, coaching them and uh, yeah i enjoyed that stream because it's fantastic mm. to coach kids yeah yeah first thing is they they are 100% into it yeah if you catch mm. their attention they are 100% into whatever they are doing the trick is to catch right, their right. attention uh, another thing is yeah. every day you can see the progress happening mm. right and that graph is fantastic somebody is in second standard to 10th standard how that kid has changed and mm. so yeah that i did till about uh, 92 93 time frame uh, mm. and then i got into you know 90 yeah uh, 90 94 like to be precise till 94 i was doing uh, very serious coaching uh, but then i uh, you know family etc starts happening and then you have to get into yeah. career mm. uh, though i was working i was not really serious about my you know career i have to run yeah. i have to do theater that's all you know once you get married things change and then i yeah yeah then the entire career thing started yeah i was never mm. into any sort of coaching etc after 94 uh, but never okay. stopped my own uh, my, my own fitness or mm. anything uh, wherever i will go i will catch hold of people who are working with me and i will make them run that's that's mm. always been the case 
yeah mm. so that's how till the till getting into my career is what all happened mm. uh, but i mm. never stopped yeah i remember mm. uh, when we were doing one a project a very very long project in des moines and mm. you know des moines right midwest and uh, how how yes. how the sun mm. will beat you down and how the snow mm. will bury you right so yeah 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 but the entire team used to be you know uh, scared of me that no i will <laughs> knock on them <laughs> but i used to drag everyone so that's how i always yeah, wanted yeah. people to get fit you know and yeah, never yeah. ever stop that uh, i actually in 94 started one gym yeah me and my wife she is a national uh, champion uh, in rope malkam so together uh, with her uh, in 90 when i stopped coaching around that time we started a gym a full fledged gym hmm. three story gym uh hmm. where in where in pune, pune yeah, or in it was in pune pune hmm. yeah with uh, in partnership with somebody who had money of course and uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> at that stage of life you typically don't have money right so right right yeah so we established the gym ran it for 3 4 years and then i got hmm. very very serious into my career and things moved on hmm Uh, hmm. so never ever stopped catching hold of people and making them do fitness never ever right right yeah so that's been that's been a central theme yeah. central theme in your life and and also i think you know uh, while you were uh, sharing your own personal journey you know i i grew up in the 80s too um and at that time uh, the idea of long distance running was really not there i mean if you're a runner you're running 100 meters or 200 meters yeah 100 100 um, i mean that was highly idea of running yeah, yeah, right yeah. and in fact when you tell people running most people think oh no no i can't run that fast yeah. right most of the time yeah. and long distance running is a much yeah. i think has is come into our lives pretty uh, late uh, pretty late recently. in india it has come yeah, pretty, pretty late so yeah. pune has a tradition of uh, marathon yeah pune international mm-hmm. marathon is i guess the oldest marathon in india it mm-hmm. was pretty in the 80s it was there uh, i remember once rajiv gandhi flagging off so it is that old mm-hmm. so mm. yeah it was uh, so it has been around we have done our uh, mm. volunteering etc at those this but like you said it was not for common man right it was for yeah, yeah, people yeah. from services will come and run and this kind of yeah, things yeah 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 athletics was uh, always something you have to be gifted you always thought of yeah, yeah, yeah. you know only the gifted people like you yeah. could people who can run fast yeah. or you have a special gift right it's not for everybody yeah, yeah. that was how it was uh, that that's that's fascinating so um 94 you uh, moved on you got into your you kind of uh, got into your mainstream career went become a technologist and all that so uh, you were still running or uh, was what was fitness for you those days uh, during that time yeah i was running uh, hmm. but as i mentioned right i was a 100 meter sprinter so for us hmm. Hmm. 20 minutes of run continuous run is too much yeah you know we hate yeah, off seasons yeah. yeah for sprinters off season your coaches will make you run 4 uh, kilometers 5 kilometers just to get that stamina built in 8 kilometers mm-hmm. so that's the longest for a sprinter yeah we dread mm-hmm. long distance running because we don't mm-hmm. have those kind of muscles in the first place to continue doing that mm-hmm. uh, but uh, always 20 30 40 minutes of run and gym i was mm. i'm majorly into okay. uh, doing a lot of gym and calisthenics because uh, i mm. dabbled some time uh, in college days with gymnastics so you know i mm. know a lot of things uh, that nowadays goes as calisthenics so i never so i always mm. did something or the other uh, yeah but i loved running so i always loved running mm. especially in uh, you know the the trails etc oh, mm. and uh, i go for trail running i used to go for a lot of trail running because pune mm. has that fascin- fascinating hill tops to run and that's mm. where it comes from mm. so 8 10 kilometers was you know regular sometimes so i'll keep on doing never stop that but mm. never beyond 8 or 10 yeah if i do 10 it's like oh my goodness i have achieved something If you ask me to and, do uh, 10 sprints of 100 meters now also i can do i guarantee yeah. none of the long distance guys will be able to do the sixth one at the pace 
you know 95 percent or 100 percent of their ability yeah i can do that for 10 15 times even at 60 so so what about racing? Were you uh, doing like 5Ks or something oh, no, during no, those no, days? When you were, no, like you it was said, basically right? just, uh, hmm. this is, uh, long distance is not for me, it was very clear. Hmm. Yeah, I will not go hmm. and got into any race till uh, maybe much later in my life when I hmm. got into it. Never into racing. Hmm. Yeah, But always continue doing this. I will always create a schedule for me. I know what has to be hmm. done. I want, I should be working this much on my stamina, this much on my strength. Yeah. I will always have a schedule. I can show you schedules mm. from, you know, all those years. Uh, I'll, uh, I love yeah. doing those schedules and keeping the diary and keeping a track of yeah. what I was doing, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. And you also mentioned your wife is a uh, an athlete too, right? Uh, yes. Did you, did you say your wife is an athlete? Yeah, she is a national champion. She was a national champion in the rope malkam. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's a form of uh, rope malkam. Is a form of malakam where it's on the rope which is da- dangling about thirty feet high, and you do all yoga poses mm-hmm. without any support. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she has been doing that, and uh, she has been part of. The opening ceremonies of Asia Arts and stuff like that. So she has choreographed the Rope Malkam uh, scene in uh, these big events, right? Mega events. Right, right. Uh, yeah, she has performed internationally. She's been called many a times to perform internationally. Mm, yeah, nice. so she has. Been... So fit family, basically. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fit yeah. family, oh, yeah. fit couple. My mother was a badminton <laughs> player in 50s. Okay. Yeah, she okay. was a proper, uh, uh, you know, a competitive badminton player in 50s. So, mm. <laughs> always the entire family is, apart from my father's side, he's a professor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have that too, right? You're also an adjunct professor, I heard, I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you have a bit, of, a bit of that academic side too, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? I'm also, you know, they call professor of practice, adjunct professors, mm. where... Uh, your industry experience is utilized by the professional courses mm. like MBAs, etc. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm, uh, mm-hmm. so so you don't go to those colleges and tell them to run, right? You're basically <laughs> teaching them insurance yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, <laughs> you want good grades? Come for come for those <laughs> exercise like workouts yeah, and run yeah, yeah. workouts. So yeah, no, I have to hold back that uh, urge. I teach Seems innovation <laughs> management and uh, product management. Because that's my hmm. another area of interest from my career perspective. So, yeah, product right, management right. and uh, innovation management. I've done courses with IMB hmm. with that as well. Nice. So, yeah. Nice, nice. Terrific. Great. So, <clears throat> so we're coming back to your running journey. 94, uh, you moved on, career, you started a gym. And then, um, how did... Uh, uh, this whole thing about Jainagar Jaguar happened. How did that come about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, from uh, about uh, 99, around 99 time frame, 98, 99, is where my daughter got into competitive swimming. Yeah, and those... So, it runs in the family. <laughs> it's, it's like, everybody, <laughs> everybody is doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so, you know, those who are parents of swimmers know this well. Uh, hmm. it's not a swimmer's life it's the parent of a swimmer's life there is no life for a parent of a swimmer yeah it's always yeah, yeah. on the side of the pool yeah so we spent yeah, around yeah. eight uh, years eight nine years into that till she got hmm. into a stage when she said you know i want to do something other things with my life and then she stopped around 99 hmm. and uh 99 2000 something like that and then i thought now mm. it's uh no sorry not 99 uh my bad around 2007 uh eight she said it's enough i want mm. to now concentrate on something in life and she left the competitive swimming around 2008 9 time frame and uh, mm-hmm. then i wanted to do something uh for myself and then mm. i got into uh, running uh, regularly running because with her coaching also when she's swimming i used to go for a run but then i didn't had any mm-hmm. 
एनी पर से अ गोल राइट अदरवाइज देयर वाज अ गोल ऑलवेज दैट व्हाइल शी इज रनिंग इन बसवनगुड़ी एथलेटिक सेंटर यू गो इन लालबाग एंड कीप ऑन रनिंग यू नो टिल टू आवर्स यू हैव टू किल द टाइम सो कीप ऑन रनिंग डू सम एक्सरसाइज सो वंस दैट स्टॉप्ड आई वांटेड सम टारगेट एंड 2000 Ten around ten or something. Uh, somebody said that this uh, there uh, there was this PCS World Ten K. I guess at that time hmm. that was the last year of Sunfeast. It was called Sunfeast. I guess so they said ten hmm. kilometer. Uh, but I didn't tr- participated in that year. But that was in my head. And next year somebody came and uh, uh, talked to me saying that uh, there is a marathon happening ten kilometer and. immediately i you know pounce on that person who was saying that that was poor a young girl saying that never say 10 km marathon marathon is 42 etc mm. i gave her a big lecture <laughs> yeah, and then i realized why i am giving lecture i should do it so i joined uh, mm. 2012 i guess uh, i did uh, tcs world 10k mm. and then i was looking for continuing and then i saw at those days if you remember uh, there used to be runner for life right runners mm-hmm. for life they used to conduct a lot of things and they had a website where you can register your club and so there was a name mentioned jayanagar jaguars i was in jayanagar so i contacted mm-hmm. them and uh, i joined them there was uh, mm-hmm. a very senior runner suresh was there and a lot of other runners mm-hmm. were there so suresh pati was mm-hmm. one of the prominent guys who used to keep the flock together right mm. uh, take everybody to breakfast that's the most important thing mm. right? <laughs> when mm-hmm. you get into the recreational running so that's how mm. i got into longer distance so when i joined they said yeah you are you, you run so well because being a trained athlete that form of running doesn't change right right right, right, right. so by look of it they can figure out that my form was correct so then it started mm. in uh, you know you should do half For a hundred meter guy, ten kilometer is the limit of life. <laughs> long, super yeah. long. Yeah, and when they were saying half, so but I continued, did half. Uh, uh, I did, I did first half was KTM. Yeah, mm. then did mm. Bangalore Ultra, and you know those days it was pretty easy. There were not many people who were running, so somebody with uh, mm. basic fitness level could get a podium. Yeah, so I typically mm-hmm. used to get podiums in all of this, yeah, in age group, age mm-hmm. group categories. Uh, so, yeah, that's how I got into uh, long distance and continued. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. how the journey started for long distance. Nice. And and then, um, <clears throat> at what point did you start coaching? Uh, become a coach in uh, Jayanagar Jagu? Yeah. So, twenty thirteen is where. Uh, i had another target of completing 50 because i was becoming 50 mm-hmm. at that time uh, mm-hmm. so some idea came to me that i should do 50 at 50 mm-hmm. right and uh, that's where i trained for 15 2013 i did 50 kilometers uh, mm-hmm. and uh, then uh, i realized that if i want to continue whatever is happening not only in our group of jjs but whatever i was seeing around because you know i used to go for this uh, uh life is calling weekend runs and those kind of things so there was no structured mm-hmm. training right mm-hmm. as i mentioned much earlier that athletics training is very very structured yeah we do things mm-hmm. on purpose and we take a lot of rest and things like that uh, mm-hmm. that was not a focus anywhere in bangalore yeah pani sir mm-hmm. has recently started uh, coaching so that's where there was some uh, things were there there was there used to be nike run club but mm-hmm. again it was not a yearly planning etc was given right and mm-hmm. as a coach uh, as a trained athlete you understand the importance of yearly planning now you have to plan a mm-hmm. year you can't mm-hmm. just go and run i can't take that right, uh, right. that's how it is i have Uh, seen that as an athlete, as a coach. So mm. then I said, "This is not. This is not the way to run." So I got everybody together and said that let us mm. start training. 
we should train mm. properly and all of that in 2014 we did first uh, tcs world 10k i gathered everybody whoever of course ready to listen yeah uh, in mm. those days there was no concept of coach so why they should listen to me right yeah because they might be running for uh, longer distance faster than me mm. right but some people around eight people were interested and they mm. they got trained and there used to be finishers t-shirt those days and i pretty well mm. remember that time 52 was a cut off for finishers t-shirt now you don't get it even for 50 but mm. yeah that year and everybody got a finishers t-shirt so everybody said yeah 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 was we started he started training and things started changing so then we announced a proper program in 2014 mm. uh, bangalore marathon and mm. uh, that's onwards we started coaching uh, very seriously we started creating mm. uh, various programs so uh, twtk was uh, we started this 10 weeks to 10 kilometers then we started mm. ryfm run your first marathon run your finest marathon mm. and those kind of modules i started creating and uh, mm. that's how from 2014 the entire running coaching thing started mm-hmm. yeah interesting and and um, was this something that you were doing as a, 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 i mean was this like a paid service or was it uh, more of because you were just starting off these eight or nine people yeah first it wasn't a paid service of course yeah mm-hmm. uh, these guys uh, they realized that uh, no i have done a put, i have put in a lot of effort so they got me a garment and that's how it is Right, okay. as a yeah, it was more day, of a uh, voluntary. Then I never yeah, yeah, used yeah. to charge at in those days. Mm. Uh, once mm. uh, all of them, once the group was bigger, they gifted a cycle. So that's only thing, right? Right, right. But right. in a year or so, we started realizing that it really doesn't work. Yeah, people come, mm. they do for some time, and they go off, right? Unless you charge money, there is no commitment. you have to invest in mm. your fitness that's what the real thing is and makes sense yeah that's where i started charging yeah mm. earlier yeah. we used to just pull in the money and that's how everybody used mm. to pull but then uh, around 18 or 19 is where uh, not 18 19 uh, sorry uh, 14 so yeah 16 somewhere we actually started publishing that for 3 months you have to pay so much right then right. Uh, we created a proper designated appointments for the uh, you know for the entire group somebody was a mm. uh, treasurer somebody was secretary and so on and so forth right and i am mm. the coach that's how the entire thing started uh, putting right. together and whoever spent some time uh we used to give back to that person whatever amount right uh, mm-hmm. and that still continues uh, mm-hmm. we give uh, you know money back to whoever puts in time for helping me coach uh right. they are captains or something yeah it's not something where you can run your family of course but at least your mm-hmm. family don't crib saying that how many shoes you have got because you have got shoes from <laughs> what uh, you are earning from, so, from the Uh, yeah. right. so that kind of money yes so uh, we can give to these guys yeah. yeah so while all this was happening since you know 2014 or so you were still working uh, as as a full time professional in yeah, 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 as yeah. well right? full time professional mm. in i was uh, in tech companies and as you know tech companies means crazy travels international travels so yeah 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 and uh, i was into innovations or new offerings and things like that mm. so i have to go and face customer to tell my innovation nobody else can right because it's mine yeah yeah or yeah. whatever right, thing right. what we are doing maybe not innovation a good, very big word maybe but new service we have created a small tool we have created mm-hmm. it's you you have right, to go right. and sell so you have to crazy travel this and uh, yeah yeah there is no delivery part of it it's just going in presentation so that means you don't mm. stay long enough all right uh, that's mm. how that crazy part got into mm. it and uh, 
yeah did that for almost 20 years yeah from 2000 to 2020 yeah just so so you were co- you were doing the uh, coaching at j uh, you know jjs and traveling at work oh, yeah. so how are you balancing this whole the whole thing i mean the yeah 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 the multiple i mean you you also you're also a family man so how were you managing yeah uh, so never stopped never this stopped uh, this coaching uh, and my work yeah because yeah like you said there is a family there is a family pressure this daughter her, mm. her education this you you know there's mm. always mm. lot of things for family you have to do uh, right. that's right. that's your primary duty so mm. yeah that was happening once you decide to do it uh, you know you always find time that is nothing so what's your mantra how how do you do it i mean like I mean that's the biggest problem people have uh, finding time no, to do no. what they love. No, that's, that's but you seem to have cracked right. the code. We find time for okay. what mm-hmm. we love. Right mm-hmm. we find time for watching serials, binge watching, mm-hmm. right because we love that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you love something you will find time. Uh, absolutely mm-hmm. I've never faced that challenge ever. Yeah of course my wife will uh, crib and uh, crib is a mild word. Yeah but <laughs> 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 yeah but yeah uh, i did find time uh, and in all of that uh, my career also i continued uh, doing mm. things what should be done i had got patents on my name etc so mm. never uh, kind of uh, you know let go the career part uh, mm. uh, continued doing both parallelly together and uh, yeah mo- some part of my career is always been competency building right i have to create mm-hmm. teams because i am into new offerings solutions products so right, right. build a stream from scratch so coach them mm-hmm. right ultimately mm-hmm. coach them uh, mm-hmm. so it's kind of uh, matching what i was doing inside and outside and which i love so there is no so uh, you, you so uh, there was a no moment when there's so much because jj is also grew quite a yes, bit you're, you're yes, a huge come, yes. so uh, with so many people your work your family at no moment don't you have a downtime don't you have a moment saying why am i doing all this why don't i just do one or two two things and be happy no <laughs> have you never felt that never 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 so i'll tell you why for if you have recently come to bangalore if whatever i'm going to tell you is going to increase whatever uh, small respect you have for me multifold yeah because i used to mm-hmm. travel from jayanagar to whitefield for 5 years mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so, work yeah so those who know bangalore know what pain that is uh, right yeah it's sometimes it wow. two plus hours one way you get stuck uh, two plus hours one way uh, but um, mm. yeah i used to get ta- cabs Yeah, first from mm-hmm. office, I will pay and get it for me, or then Uber, Ola, Uber started, okay. right? Mm-hmm. And then you also got those small, uh, you know, wire type of dongles earlier days. Before mm-hmm. that, uh, dongles with uh, that USB came in, mm-hmm. right? So you do that, and you are immediately connected, start working, and most of mm-hmm. the JJ's backend work has happened during. this four hours of uh, travel mm. back and forth uh, at least mm. morning to two and a half hours when i get stuck all that was spent on you know, doing changes because while coming back you will have office calls but while mm. going that's all all the entire time is dedicated to putting effort for changes mm. yeah and of course uh, software so saturday sundays are some things which is in our hand so use that Mm. So my Saturday Sundays have never been, uh, you know, I I've never relaxed on Saturday Sundays. I have a lot of people calls to be taken for JJ's, a lot of things mm. which have been pushed to do it for JJ's happens on Saturday Sunday. Mm. So yeah, I I utilize my time maybe well, but as I said, if you love it, uh, you can find time. I've done that with my theater as well. So there is right. enough time for your, uh, you know, your passion, your love. always you'll have time yeah 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 well said well said so you still do theater as no, well no, no, in no. the middle of all this i or? stopped it no that took a pause i stopped it quite early uh that's on some principles i stopped it whatever i, I mm. theater what i did was physical theater 
Mm. Yeah, it was called physical theater. I started that moment mm. in India. I got uh, uh, I got scholarship from Sangeet Natak Academy for that. I did some. I got some Europeans to come here. Went to Europe. Did, but it was a physical theater. What well, what is a the physical? So you theater? don't talk too much. You're. Mm. It's a the theater is a visual medium, and uh, mm. use whatever visual you can do. That means human body is something which. you can use to express so use mm-hmm. any form of expression it be it kathak be it pantomime be it classical ballet whatever you can put the components together and narrate your story mm-hmm. right ultimately it's narration okay. of story instead of talking too much use uh, use your body so that we used to mm-hmm. do pretty pretty early now what kind of things you see the dances you see on the reality shows etc those were the things we were doing pre 90s uh, yeah mm-hmm. so again theater was <laughs> related to fitness <laughs> yeah okay. some activities awesome. like this. so th- that's uh, that's a t- great takeaway uh, promote for people who are listening and uh, you know seeing this is i think your message of you know if you love something uh, it's almost like karma yoga right uh, if you love something uh, you will find i probably you know the time expands yes to accommodate uh, uh, what has to be done and you'll find those uh, find that so i think that's a great takeaway for especially folks who always think oh you know i can't run and i don't have time to get up and run i have too much work going on and people suffer from that right, right? just lack of ability to do those things so what i tell this uh, those who say this is uh, look around and you will find lot of lady runners Yeah, mm. training for full marathon. They have two kids. They are working, mm. and still they are training for full marathon, ultra marathons, and they do work going home. Yeah, it's not unlike mm. us. We go home and say, "Ask where is the breakfast?" All right. They also do breakfast. They send kids to school. All of that they do, right? Plus they work and they do this. So just look around, and you yeah. will find your uh, motivation. to say, when you say i don't have time right uh, yeah. amazing is uh, hats off to lot of these lady runners who do this totally. and yeah. um means yeah. absolutely i think i think nature has created uh, women with stronger minds and <laughs> men with stronger bodies i think yeah, i think in 20 20- <laughs> physically also right? they are better suited for endurance running right mm-hmm. and that's why they are uh, challenging men in endurance running extreme mm-hmm. ultras is where they are getting podium in you know, open event regularly nowadays mm-hmm. right uh, yeah whereas for running marathons men have been doing for centuries women have been mm-hmm. doing for 60 years right they are closing the gap so fast yeah yeah, yeah. i was talking to uh, uh, a lady athlete once and uh, we were talking about pain we were talking about uh, ability to handle pain yes. as a endurance runner she said uh, you know as women uh, we give birth yeah. so you have no idea what pain is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay there threshold for fair enough fair enough <laughs> absolutely you know, threshold for pain uh, ultimately what matters in endurance running is threshold for pain how much pain, pain yeah, you yeah, can yeah. sustain for a longer yeah. duration right yeah, yeah. that's where you are performance in uh, endurance running happens and that's where they are right, right. much much advanced than men uh, yeah means I, I, i'm not doing men bashing here i'm just being uh, <laughs> of uh, course you know? we are two two men so we can do <laughs> some men bashing we, But, uh, yeah, without because we it's us so we can bash a uh, bash uh, us ourselves right yeah t- terrific so you know that makes sense and 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 um, so as you were doing this you know uh, and i think jj's was scaling it's becoming bigger uh, you know i think what now you are in multiple branches so it's a big operation yeah, yeah. um so is this is this a business now yeah, or yeah, is it a non profit it's a business it's a business for profit business yeah as i said i realized that you know if you don't pay it's uh, people don't take it seriously yeah. and second important thing is if you want to scale right you have to invest without investment there is no scalability right and we all know we are from 
uh, you know professional backgrounds and we know how what that need what that entails to scale mm. jjs mm. is about scaling mm. right if you really see uh, the way we have grown is we have scaled we never stopped scaling up yeah? even mm. during pandemic i opened two new centers mm. right uh, and you will fail of course yeah, scaling means you are going to fail there are going to be mm. some centers which are going to run very well uh, they are going to grow mm. some centers as you start for some reason they don't grow you keep on pumping them and all of those things will happen like any franchise right. right if you pick up a franchise spot saying that this spot is perfect for the franchise and that that particular mm. unit doesn't run at all for whatever reasons many reasons mm. Mm. Same thing with JJ's as well. We have to keep on always looking for scaling up, and uh, sometimes mm. it works, sometimes it doesn't. But that means I need to have a uh, backup. I can't be getting out of mm. my role as a coach. I have to continue as my role as a coach and don't get into a lot of CEO things or especially admin mm. and money management, which I'm very bad at. Mm. Uh, so there has to be somebody mm. who does that. Uh, yeah. those people need we have to pay them right yeah. at any given time jj's has about 7 800 runners in any yeah. given time training now somebody has yeah. to take their calls somebody has to say that oh this i registered for this program no i don't want to go there you know the typical customer uh, care operations yeah thing yeah. has to happen yeah. so just understand yeah. 700 800 and even 10% wow. of them has a problem, right? Which definitely they will have. We're talking about 50, 60 mm. calls a day. Somebody has to. So that means I have to spend there. And without technology, no scalability, right? So you don't have a staff. You're doing all this by yourself. No, no, no. I have a staff. I have staff. You have staff. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people think that I have so many runners. That means I'm earning. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's why this fellow has left a... Uh, big corporate job no i have to spend that money uh, yeah. yeah many a times yeah. i am in red yeah uh, hope my wife doesn't hear this podcast <laughs> this part um, yeah most of the time we'll bleep it <laughs> we'll just bleep it <laughs> uh, so yeah because we have to pay those right mm. you have to have people mm. who will do uh, your advertisement mm. right creatives a lot of it's a tough business. marketing has to happen it's a tough business. Yeah, I mean, it's a business. Uh, the, co the coaching, no, I mean saying coaching is a very pleasurable activity, but the business part of it is not easy. Yeah, it's, very it's, tough. it's not it? easy. And that's the yeah. major problem coaches face all over the world for hmm. all coaching activities, irrespective of whichever is their sport. Yeah, the coach's hmm. time goes into administration so much hmm. that the coach can't uh, you know, scale his operations. Yeah. And that's mm. one thing which uh, we managed in JJ's is scaling up. I had a fantastic team mm. with me working always. Mm. And because of that, that scalability is happening. Right? JJ's mm. has, JJ's is not only me. Right? It right. can't be me. It, 800, 700, one man can't do that. Right? You have to have a proper well, team. One question. Yeah. One question I have is, uh, no, I, I hear you. I hear you. Obviously, the operations are big with 800 people. How are you motivating people to stick with their commitment? I mean, so out of these 800 people, do you have a lot of mostly repeats or are they new? But there will and be how churn. are you motivating people? There will be churn. Typically, mm. the cycle is about two and a half years is where the runners will stick to you. Mm. Yeah. Then uh, if they stick to running after that, they then want to do things of their own. That's a typical mm -hmm. churn I have seen. And that's uh, that's going to happen, right? Any business will have a churn. Right, right. right. So once you hit uh, uh, two, two and a half years, your concentration on doing that starts uh, going down, mm -hmm. your family pressures, etc. Mm -hmm. will be there. So I am saying two, two and a half years is that takes you time for completing at least a 50. Two, once you start running mm -hmm. and completing a 50 kilometer is where you are going to need that much of time, right? And you right, get right, keep right. on getting some or other goal. When you go behind mm -hmm. that goal, that's where mm -hmm. runners will stick to 
for that much of time, two and two and a half years of a time. And then the churn will happen. So to coming back to your question about motivation, we do a lot of, see, a human being needs gratification, right? Mm. You continue in running till you are getting some gratification out of it, right? Externally mm. viable gratification. Right, right. Right. So you keep on giving them in various ways. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and uh, you create, you talk. Yeah, I talk, of, I talk a lot. Uh, mm. But more importantly, what why JJ is growing is because of the training center heads, what we created, right? Mm -hmm. And they somehow, for some reason, they believe in me and they mm -hmm. have taken that as their kind of vocation, right? These are all, mm -hmm. all professionals. I don't have a, right. a training center head who, who mm -hmm. him or her, uh, that's their sole bread thing, right? I have CEOs of companies, CFOs of companies, uh, you know, people who own big companies are uh, mm -hmm. training center heads. Yeah, whatever they get. So they're doing it for the love of it. Right? Is nothing, right? Compared mm -hmm. to what their professional, and still right. they are doing it. So uh, it's about motivating them. Then, then turn they motivate uh, others, right? Yeah. Uh, so this training center head is what uh, we have done. It's helping to grow. Mm. So that helps motivation. And as I said, I yeah. talk to a lot of runners. Uh, I always, Saturday, Sundays will be on some or other talk mm. thing. I go to a lot of uh, venues. You will see my Insta, etc. about just yesterday I was at one training center. We'll do something with them, answer their questions. Mm. Yeah, when you have a center where there are 200 people, right? Mm. Uh, People will complain about you not talking to them, you not addressing them, right? Mm. Uh, there is a limitation how much you can reach out. That's mm. where we have training center heads, uh, captains. We have multi, uh, like, mm. you know, matrix kind of organization put together. But uh, to answer your question, the last is, uh, you know, give some gratification. That's why I always mm. uh, do find out some gratification where they will feel happy about themselves. Then only you get motivated. And uh, secondly, create a lot of, uh, you know, role models. That again mm. keeps uh, runners motivated. So gratification, role models. Uh, some runners who are very serious, they, they need bashing uh, real hard and they continue because of that because they understand that you are being pushed and they are interested in getting pushed right that is why they are running so various ways you have to uh, look at what happens is sometimes you think this runner is into hardcore running you push and that uh, runner crumbles uh, those kind of things are bound to happen right? Right, right some some decisions are going to go wrong that happens with every coach every athlete uh, goes through these kind of things. Yeah. Coaches think that this guy can do great and he knows hmm. coaches never go wrong. I'm not trying to boost here, but because they observe hmm. from outside, they hmm. understand what can happen. So 90% of time, if hmm. a coach is telling you that you can do sub two, you are a sub two hmm. runner. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Because they observe from outside. That's, that's yeah. the most yeah. important thing. Yeah, that's how motivation uh, they keep on motivating. Yeah. Right? Makes sense. And I also saw on your website that uh, you're now uh, taking people to Kenya for training, which is quite fascinating. Yeah. Uh, so what what is changing? So you know, ever since you started this Kenya project, uh, has something changed in your approach to training? Is there anything new that's coming from the Kenyans into your thought process? Uh, yeah. So I have been, of course, like. Uh, Anybody, you know, into in, uh, endurance running should uh, mm. watch what they do, East Africans, because mm. they are the mm. guys. If you are a sprinter, you yeah. should be doing what West Africans are doing. Right? They are the guys. Mm -hmm. Maybe US gets medals, but their origins are mm. from there. Right? Uh, right, right? So what they do, you have to keep on watching. And I've been watching these guys, what they do. Their work ethics are fantastic. 
Yeah, they take their work very, very seriously, which unfortunately, uh, let me not be controversial, let's say majority of either uh, recreational runners or professional runners don't take it seriously. Hmm. Yeah, the commitment. Commitment is not going out and running. That is not commitment. That's hmm. just foolish endeavor of getting yourself injured. You have to take your running so seriously that you should take your rest, your recovery very, very seriously. Yeah, that's your that's where your worth work ethic starts. Yeah, running, going out and completing something is not really the end of it. How you recover is the most important part for endurance or any sport. If you take your recovery seriously, it's not about just lying down, right? Mm-hmm. Your mentally should be focused on your recovery. Um, you should take breaks. All of that put together. So people understand running faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People want to do PB in each and every event they participate in, which is wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or these Kenyans or these athletes, what you see, they don't do that. Mm-hmm. They will enter mm-hmm. an event where we think they are doing their PB, but they are not. They are, they are actually gunning for something else. They are trying it out here. So, for example, we have seen uh, Sabade running half marathons. Right? He is not a half marathon runner. He is doing that. He doesn't go and participate in a uh, Olympic half marathon. But he will do some half marathon here where he wants to test his endurance. Right? The speed endurance over this time. Then their coach will count back and say that for 3000 what he has to do. All right? That is what they will do. But we, we don't understand these kind of things. That's a work ethics. These guys have fantastic work ethics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you are doing your workout, 100%. Uh, that means not running longer. Not running faster. Mm-hmm. If you have been told to run tempo... You run in tempo only. You don't... I have seen that Kipchoge doing myself with my own eyes, you know. Mm. Um, he was doing his repeats at whatever time was told to him and he kept on doing mm. that, right? He can mm. run uh, two times faster, but mm. he is not doing that because that mm. particular session's goal is to run. So that worth ethics, what they have is phenomenal and that uh, has to come here is it going to change everybody to make uh, you know Boston qualifiers no that's not the idea you should know best uh, from the best right we do that for every other thing but we don't do for the thing what we love right if you are a runner you should go and train in Eton Uh, end of the story right if you are for whatever any other passion you go and try to find out the best and enjoy that right if you are a music lover, yeah but but uh, but pramod you know since you are dealing with almost 700 800 people uh, i'm assuming if you just look at the bell curve right uh, which is an, uh, just the law of averages you're probably talking what about 10% of your um, your you know coaches who want to operate at that level of excellence. Not necessarily. Uh, is that a fair statement? No, no. Uh, so that's one way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. But if you are running at a six pace, why you should not experience mm-hmm. the best way of training? Yeah, You are not going to run at pace of four or pace of three. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. If you compare faster runners, there is no faster runner in India. If you really go and stand in Eton, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. What is, who's fast? They, they are not people mm-hmm. who come and pace you for 400 rupees, right? Mm-hmm. Are people who run a marathon in 215, right? Mm-hmm. They don't get anywhere in their country. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. that's the experience you will get. And you should get that. If that's your right. passion, you should train mm-hmm. to your fullest capacity. It doesn't matter whether you are running yeah. at a six pace, at a four pace, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Everybody has to attain their own uh, maximum 
so so now also in this one gentleman has gone hmm. he's not a fast runner right when i'm hmm. saying fast he is not a sub 6 uh, average hmm. he can't run even sub 6 now he's changing hmm. and he will get into that he is not young hmm. but he is ready to put in his effort he said i want to see Oh, you know how wh- how they run what is happens why i can't mm. do my best whatever i started late in life mm. i am not gifted as they are but i should be doing my best right mm. so go and do yeah. that so as i was saying right yeah. if you like music you go to a concert mm. right you don't sing yeah. you go to a concert you enjoy that here you have an opportunity to go to a concert where you can sing along with that mm. topmost guys why not yeah, yeah right we go and spend so yeah. much time and effort in a holiday this is a fantastic vacation if you consider that right you are doing your passion once in lifetime be with olympians the entire mm. so the thing is in eton you say hi to everybody yeah because you don't know that mm. that guy or that girl is a olympic champion a world record holder yeah we don't know everybody right so the entire right, right. city is teeming with that uh, mm-hmm. and everybody should go there do this uh, this should become part of it this is not only for jjs i have this is a open program anybody can join that's my idea behind this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right so much like a pilgrimage for runners yes and from there you will start like realizing that's a message will start percolating yeah. those guys who will come yeah. back they will start telling about what is real training Mm. yeah and then uh, the typical level of coaching what we have here right will improve mm. Mm. yeah mm. Uh, we typically right. have what uh, i don't want to sound too radius here but the point is n of one coaching doesn't work really yeah your n should be very very long before you get into coaching mm. and yeah, the number of runners you have been observing you have been working on you so you have to observe so many people you have to take note of that figure out how their mm. that in has to be so big and then you say tell somebody that you do this yeah mm. typically the in is one when the coaching is happening in the recreational area mm. in is one and yeah, you have achieved something yeah. you want to tell somebody which is great which you should do but right, uh, right, right. then you have to get exposure to this kind of training right yeah, that's yeah. my idea for this you might think that uh, you know he's talking too much uh, he's just here for money fine but my entire idea is at some time we as india will get into endurance running properly mm, yeah. yeah yeah golf grew because a lot of ceos were playing golf right mm. that is what is happening with running in india and mm. ultimately that is going to get us where money will come and we will get yeah yeah uh, competitive athletes getting into international medals yeah. so that's one of the way yeah yeah right absolutely yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah absolutely i mean uh, i mean money is required uh, it's absolutely. not a bad thing you know uh, you can't do uh, do everything as a social service uh, there's only so much you can yeah. push uh, through volunteerism so at some point it becomes professional and that's when you get the results because when you pay money you get results absolutely right? I mean, or, or you or you don't pay yeah <laughs> you, you pay that. then you are if you are not serious the investing in yeah. yourself uh, then why yeah even train uh, right yeah yeah you have to invest in yourself you are investing in yourself yeah. your health that's what's important yeah 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 absolutely terrific so um, so what's next you know uh, where where i what's next for you in your journey yeah so again uh, you know this is something which i have been thinking and this is something which has changed uh, my approach to coaching that was your earlier question it's not the kenians but while my while i was reading uh, and before just before pandemic i was reading some who report and about active life etc right uh, active lifestyle or mobility mm. uh, you know you should be mobile and how it is so there i saw one very 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 disturbing fact that 
you know, four out of five adolescents are not active enough. Hmm. Right? That is huge. That is way beyond COVID. That is way beyond any pandemic. And these are adolescents are tomorrow's uh, hmm. tomorrow's adults. And yep. so where we are going, we have to make hmm. sure that our next generation is active. Means I'm not trying to hmm. be grandiose here, but this is real problem. We have to understand this problem. We have to work on this problem. Yeah. As individual, as everybody in their capacity has to do this, right? Uh, otherwise, we have a very, very bleak future. Uh, right? We talk about global warming, but this is equally bad. And yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I think it has a direct impact to mental health too. Yeah, every everything, not right? just physical health. So yeah. that's yeah. where my next goal is to reach out to more and more people that have been doing it, but the concept has changed i have been part of one new ngo which are uh, which are there only for uh, this avoiding ncds right non communicable diseases that's where i am helping them to get into uh, making them mobile right so my focus has started changing in that direction uh, so getting more and more people uh, i am getting so i have been using a app homegrown app mm. one of my runner mm. uh, who is iit and uh, he has developed this app and we have been using that so mm. uh, that's why we are scaled we mm. are uh, we are revamping that app uh, of course funds are less because it comes from the coaching only so mm-hmm. once the app is done we have some more uh, plans in terms of scalability in terms of going out for other sports so this mass mass fitness activity can be through mm. other sports as well need not only be running and their coaches also can then start scaling they are not scaling they are the great coaches not scaling because of they don't have this platform what we have been using so i'm trying to get that platform out so a lot of other coaches also can start scaling uh, right. yeah so that's the next step hopefully things will fall in place terrific yeah awesome so uh, pramod i think we covered quite a bit of ground uh, we you know we spent a little uh, quite a, quite some time around your own personal journey how you know how you grew up and how running came into your life and how it's all kind of evolved into a kind of a personal mission uh, which is more than just your own personal mission but it's becoming a community yeah. uh, vision and mission which is awesome um so uh coming to kind of the last part of our conversation here where i have a fun q and a round with my guests okay. so uh, you are you ready yeah, for that yeah yeah sure okay so so first thing which is my favorite question for all the guests i have on my show is uh, you know we all 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 of us people think that runners uh, you know are all very serious people they don't eat much they only eat very healthy and all that but i know we all love food so what is your favorite junk food sweets what sweets Any which sweet. ones i can punish <laughs> you with sweet tooth three traditional uh, i hop pancakes three <laughs> in one go i'm not exaggerating wow. i can polish yeah. up 25 wow. jalebis today also wow awesome that's great that's great and and do you do you do that uh, like do you reward yourself no, with no, that no. or you kind no. of uh, big... <laughs> but given a chance i will so if you challenge me yeah. give me 25 jalebis i will finish off nothing will happen yeah. i just love uh, sweets so yeah but yeah i am conscious always how much i will eat but yeah i don't yeah. Well, that's your that's not your... finicky about it it's fine like one day if i eat what's a, what's a big deal yeah 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 makes sense um the most irritating offensive thing someone has uh, told you about your uh, lifestyle running lifestyle uh no not really people always have admired uh, people always have admired my running style we are talking about people not about wife but yeah so <laughs> no one uh, no one ever uh, always admired <laughs> <laughs> 
so i uh, that's okay. the motivation right everybody gets uh, motivated and even my school uh, buddies right everybody is treating uh-huh. me with respect because of this and you know how school friends are right uh, they don't uh-huh. care where you are where, whatever you are right we don't care we can say right, right, right. Uh, anything to anybody but even those uh, are also so nobody ever made no no nobody said anything irritating to you oh uh, no 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 never so that's yeah that's maybe i'll lucky but never never oh, good good okay uh, what's your favorite running gadget uh running gadget yeah watch and uh, currently yes. i'm using garmin so hmm. yeah garmin that's about and, it but i don't and garmin has not sponsored this show <laughs> but they sponsor me <laughs> <laughs> oh they do they do seriously yeah. oh okay okay i'm garmin fine, coach fine. also so <laughs> no but oh, okay, jokes okay, apart yeah we wear it tom tom uh, but you should have something uh, so something you unless you measure something there is no improvement yeah. but uh, yeah. advice on the other side also don't get too carried away with your gadgets right yeah yeah that's yeah. and that what i see getting too carried away with gadgets keep your strava ego aside that's right that's detrimental terrific um personally speaking are you a sunrise or a sunset guy no uh, i was once upon a time a sunrise guy when i was in theater that means we okay. will not sleep till the sun rises <laughs> and that's a different way of saying sunset <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> uh, yeah uh, now i'm actually a sunrise guy i i, I don't like that. sleeping uh, you know uh, in my house uh, uh, nobody uh, i will creep if i see somebody sleeping after 7 Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that's how our household has been. Uh, my daughter used to go for swimming at five o'clock. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. The last question I have for you, which is a question I ask all my guests, is uh, if we made a movie of your life, uh, a what genre, uh, you know, what category would you put it in, and two, who would you hire to play your character? <laughs> I can act myself. I'm. <laughs> yes that's what i realized <laughs> maybe it's a comeback <laughs> yeah genre has to be uh, you know uh, comedy it has to be comedy so comedy the message has to go oh, in okay. a lighter way comedy is not a slapstick comedy mm. i'm talking about yeah, yeah. uh it should be in a lighter way because that's mm. life if you become too serious so it has uh, 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 a fun part to it so if you have seen yeah, yeah. uh 100 meters right the recent movie which is playing on uh, netflix it's about mm-hmm. a guy uh-huh. uh, who has multiple sclerosis and he completed uh, mm. uh uh triathlon so he starts mm-hmm. with walking 100 meters so that's a, such a movie about training movie about uh, mm. getting ready for a triathlon but its entire thing is for interspread with a lot of lighter movements the training also has a lot of lighter movements yeah that should be the genre right right makes sense makes sense yeah so we just need to find a producer now we, we have the actor in <laughs> <laughs> terrific well you did well uh, in the q and a pramod um we kind of coming to a wrap up here uh, i want to give you the last word any final message to the audience our listeners uh, yeah to all the recreational runners take your training seriously yeah that means don't keep on running every day there is not mm. always i will do longer distance longer distance longer distance mm. yeah take your mm. running training seriously then you will spend enough time to improve yourself in some very specific category you mm. will do optimal in that category then think of 42 50 100 tak 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 don't get into that mm. yeah and then you will mm. stop participating in every event every weekend yeah so take mm. your training seriously that's mm. Mm. that will make you yeah. longer that's runner it. runner for many years yeah 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 like like you are you know you look at you you know you're fit you look young and you're what 60 now 60 plus i guess 60. close to yeah so so you practice what you preach <laughs> so uh, completely completely hear that 
Pramod, thanks a lot. Uh, it was a wonderful conversation. Uh, we wish you all the best for your future endeavors and hopefully your uh, community uh, vision of expanding into younger people. Uh, your use of technology continues to be successful and you continue to be expand your JJ's mission. Um, uh, let you uh, enjoy the rest of the day and we'll stay in touch. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Santosh, for this. I enjoyed uh, you know, these questions. So great talking to you. And uh, yeah, let's connect sometime. Yeah. Sure. Come Thank to you. Bangalore, come to yeah. South Bangalore. We'll get you yes. all the hole in the wall places. Yes, yes, absolutely. I've actually run with your group. I don't know. I've told you that, but I've run once with your group when I was uh, in China, uh, visiting brother-in-law. I'll be there next sure, 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 sure. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.